I hope it's becoming evident by now that your heart is absolutely crucial to your life with God. The heart is central to life and it is central to the Christian life and to walking intimately with Jesus Christ. You just can't find life and you can't really find God. You certainly can't walk well with him without your heart. It's Proverbs 4:23, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. And and throughout the scriptures, the heart is placed at the center of the action, right? Thy word I have treasured in my heart, David says, that I may not sin against you. And uh, trust in the Lord, Proverbs says, with all of your heart, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart. Jesus says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. The heart is the center of the action, and especially in our life with God. And now here's the connection. How you handle desire is pretty much how you handle your heart. What you do with your deep desires is pretty much what you do with your heart. And it seems like there's sort of two extremes out there. What we do is we either just sort of follow desire and kind of serve it slavishly. You know, we just give ourselves over to our desires and that ends up getting us in a mess of trouble. Or those who are trying perhaps a more sanctified approach or wanting to live a good life, what they tend to do is just bury desire, just kill desire and call it sanctification. And neither path works. If you give your heart away and your desires to all sorts of things, you end up tangled with them. And we have all sorts of addictions and heartaches and bondage and brokenness. If we just bury our heart, then we go numb. Something in us dies. Something essential. And then we find it hard to listen to God. We find it hard even to find God and to walk with him. You've got to hang on to your heart. You've got to shepherd it through this life. And the center of that action tends to be desire. Now, on the issue of unmet longings, this, this is where things get really difficult, right? We pray, um, but there doesn't seem to be an answer. We yearn to have a child or to be married or to make a career change or we always dreamed of being you know, fill in the blank, an athlete, or maybe a pastor. You know, we always dreamed of being loved or important or a writer or something. And it hasn't happened. What you do with your unmet longings pretty much determines your spiritual future. If you just decide to kill that part of your heart and just bury it, you'll find it very difficult to go on in life with hope and with love, with um, joy and a generosity of spirit, we've got to give those unmet longings to Christ. And what I find myself doing as I'm driving down the road, or as I'm laying in bed late at night, or any time that I'm suddenly experiencing some unmet desire, some unmet longing, the very first thing I do is say, Jesus, come into this come into this. I don't know what to do with this Christ, but I ask you to come and I ask you to meet me here. And as we give over more and more of our heart's desire to God, I think we'd find something really amazing and really, really rich. We find that he is our life, that he really is more than sufficient for us. It's not resignation, okay? It's not just sort of going to numb our desires and obedience. No, it's coming to give ourselves more fully over to Christ, where we say, Jesus, I ache, I need, I yearn, I wish, but Lord, I give even this to you. And I invite you to come and fill these empty places in me. There is so much more to say 
about the role of desire and navigating through the power of desire, how God speaks through desire, what to do with desire. And so I want to encourage you that much more of that is found in my book called Desire, The Journey We Must Take to Find the Life God Offers. And you read through the Psalms and you see the dynamic of desire and you see where the psalmist comes to, these people come to a place where God really is the desire of their hearts. And in Him, we find life. 